welcome to Ask the Educator, a podcast brought to you by Healthmark Industries. Are you a sterile processing technician or manager? Maybe you work in infection prevention or biomedical engineering. Whether you're a frontline tech, endoscopy tech, OR nurse, or surgical services administrator, you undoubtedly have influence in medical device processing at your facility. In each episode, we speak with experts from the Healthmark Clinical Affairs team, industry leaders, or special guests from the trenches to answer your questions and bring you relevant industry information, equipping you for excellence in medical device processing. My name is Kevin Anderson, and I will be your host. Now let's get started. Hey, everyone. Kevin Anderson here, uh, host of the Ask the Educator podcast. Uh, happy to be back. I have Stephen Kovac with me, and we're going to jump into a a topic today that I admittedly do not know a ton about, but I'm really excited to get into it. Steve, thanks for coming on as usual. And I think this one's going to be really interesting because I can't help uh, but think that a topic like dental instruments and reprocessing isn't going to strike a nerve with every single listener out there <laughs> because we all have to go to the dentist at some point. And uh, I can just tell you from my own experience that. <laughs> Every time I go now, now that I know what I do about reprocessing and the fact that not every surgical reprocessing area is an equivalent in terms of quality and uh, being up to standard, I I am definitely sufficiently afraid every time I go to the dentist uh, to get work done. So, (laughs) Well, Kevin, why don't we call this open wide? It's the dental clinic. I mean, (laughs) because this is going to be a wide subject and maybe we'll have some other other conversations or get some dental professionals on with you later. So I'm going to start off with the dental profession is a little different in this, this sense. If you go into your dental practice and you ask your dentist what organization they belong to, some might not belong to anything. And uh, some might say, well, we get our education through our sterilizer company or, or whatever. But there is a really good organization called OSAP. It's O-S-A-P. It's the Organization for Safety, Asepsis, and Prevention for Oral Care Professionals. They sort of team up with the CDC, and you could go online, and you can get their standards and guidelines and go from there. And I know um, people have been going to Amy a long time. There's somebody from the ADA that sits on SD-79. But the real issue is, is that Amy ST-79 is a standard that applies to dental clinics. And if you just ask your dentist about their sterilizer, they'll tell you they, the majority of them probably use what's called a mailback service. Kevin, have you ever heard of a mailback BI service? No, I have not heard of a mailback BI service. Well, this is how it goes, okay? (laughs) Uh, Once a week, you run your BI. You put it in a little envelope and you mail it to a lab. And let's just say takes two days or one day, then they do whatever they got to do. And five days later, you get it back. And oh that's what you got to do once, once a week. And you're meeting the standards. Mm. And that just doesn't seem adequate because here's the other debate. Mm. Is your mouth a sterile cavity? Is it a clean cavity? What is it? You know, Mm. the same thing with their sonics. I want you to think of this next time you go in your dental uh, professional's workplace. At least it's happened where I've been. I want you, as you sit in the chair, if the doors open, really listen to some sounds, not the drilling and ah, (laughs) but in the back, you might hear the sonic continuously running. Mm. And that happens at a dental clinic I had gone to for quite a while. I'd sit there and I'm going, what is that noise? So, you know, curious George, Steve here, (laughs) curious Steve. I says, what is it? Well, that's a Sonic going, it's going through the, I mean, it's nonstop. Yeah. But we know you shouldn't be doing that. And I says, well, what's going on there? Well, we just keep the Sonic running. We put the instruments in and out through the day and then change the bath and okay, well, that's, that's really good, you know, yeah. okay. and I, I, I cringe and I've had some talks with my dentist and we've helped change some things, but, you know, it's a little different. How do you tell a dental professional, you know, and 
Mm-hmm. Where do you get books on other than Amy and a few things? Um, but you think about the dental. It's cleaning is cleaning. Sterilization is sterilization. It's going in your mouth. Whether you think of it's clean or dirty. But yeah. think about it. They've got two unique sets of instruments. And I'm going to break it down. One is simple in my mind. And the other is complex. The simple are the picks and the probes and sure. all that. And you know what? They're doing the gaps and gum and all those things. And those, you know, are fairly easy. But then when they use the cement and you know about bone oh, cement, this cement, they have <laughs> yeah. cement that gets stuck on their spatulas and different things. So how do they clear it, clean that? But then they have drills. Drills are an issue. Hmm. Little different than ours, but they're still drills and they're getting blood and sputum and, you know, all that stuff in there. So. What do you think, Kevin? Next time you walk in, I just threw this out to start the conversation. No, I know. I think what we need is some sort of standard um, way of greeting a new dentist office in a way that tells them, hey, I know a lot about sterilization and I need to know what your practice is. So, like, how do you broach that subject? Like, yeah. How do you ask, start asking them to let you in and audit the place before you before you submit to their care you know i remember talking to nancy on uh nancy chobin mm-hmm. on a side s- subject you know through email ab- about dental and she said absolutely she has had conversations with her her dentist about uh and she's even left certain dentist practices based on those wow. conversations and that's a you know, that's that's what we need to equip each other with. How that's do we right. go in and have these conversations? Because they're really important. And uh, clearly there is a gap between what's going on in the medical facility and what's going on in the dental facilities. And you you brought up a great point. You know, is it clean? Is it dirty? Uh, or is it, uh, you know, where does it fall on that spectrum when it comes to like a Spalding classification? And mm-hmm. In my mind, yes, the mouth is dirty, but like to your point, they, they're using drills and they're getting into uh, the sterile tissues at my some point. My teeth bleed, so, so they're going, <laughs> Kevin, yeah. and they, they're, so they're in a sterile bit. They're cutting, yeah, yeah. They're, you know, you know, I'm exactly. sorry. I had to no, that's my point. That's, you know, it might start off in a dirty area, but it's somewhere along the line, depending on the work that's being done, we're, we're crossing that line. Uh, just like in GI, when you do a biopsy, you're crossing that line. You know, when you're doing some of these procedures, you're crossing that sterile barrier line. So it's, it, it's a very important subject and the dental health is very much related to overall physical health. And we know that. And so things sound like to me that they need to change. (laughs) So I want to, this is going to be sort of two phased, and I just want to make sure I'm not making people not have confidence in their dental professional. They have people who go in and audit them. And if their guidelines are saying once a month or once a week, and they're doing that, then they're meeting that standard, that standard or guideline. That is, and we know that can happen in a hospital. It says minimum weekly, preferably daily. It does say if they're doing implants, they must run a BI. But if they're right. doing a mailback service, that's not coming back right away. But that's a whole yeah. other issue. Right. But how do you get people to go to best practice? And now instead of them, I don't know what a BI is. I'm just going to make it up. It's $10. And they're doing one every day that adds to the cost of their practice. Or you and I will. And I don't want people to think I'm trying to get people to buy our products. Because we believe in quality, but think about it. The sonic that is continuously running, just because it's making a sound, you've seen it, Kevin, doesn't mean it's really cavitating and working. It's a great expensive soaking tank then. So (laughs) how do we help people go to that next step? And um, part two of this, and Kevin, I'm showing my age, and I want to give Chuck Hughes in OSAP a big Shout out for those of you who don't know, Chuck Hughes has always been very, uh, he's retired now, but he was always very big in promoting dental quality. Sure. And back in the 90s, he did a movie 
where they actually, this was after the big HIV and everything, where they actually showed the splash that comes out of somebody's mouth. And it is really great. I've been trying to find it. And that's why they started wearing more face shields and gloves and so on. And then what happened now with COVID, but they showed that the splash of just the saliva hitting everybody was phenomenal. And this sort of correlates to something that just came out with uh, Corey Ofsted. She just yes. wrote that article in, in Ajax yep. about the splash and decontam and all that. So we're, doesn't matter, dental clinic, ASC, we're supposed to focus on dental clinics. It's all important. Yeah, they're sort of meeting the standards, but sometimes which one are you using? How do you, uh, who's that uh, chef? Emerald, bam, you got to kick it up a notch, you yeah. know, <laughs> right? Uh, that's a maybe, great reference. Yeah, But but you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm my, my spaghetti sauce is good. I made it right, but I can bam it and it can be better. And the better could be doing a biological every day, checking my sonic every day whatever. And we didn't even get into, I know I'm chatting quick here, but they also have other issues. They have the water lines. That's a big issue. That water is stagnant. They have certain things. They have to clean those water lines. Think about it. It's coming out. Did it, you're the first person uh, that day. Did they clean out the lines? Was that water stag? I mean, dental clinics are very important and you hit on it. Our dentist, they examine your mouth and it's for heart disease. You know, it's it's an important topic. I'm glad we're just talking it to get people thinking out there. Kevin. Yeah, exactly. And one thing I that you bring up a good point, because one of the things that I, I didn't know is that they had OSAP and they have industry standards, which is great. I have no clue how often they're updated. I have no clue how much education even the dentists have regarding the sterilization. When I think about the amount of education that our surgeons have about sterilization, and if it's anything the the same, that's a little (laughs) bit concerning because surgeons, as you know, don't, they don't get educated on sterilization. And also I think about other procedural areas. And one of them specific comes to mind and that's OB. And when OB does their own surgeries, uh, like C-sections and things like that, oftentimes that's in in their own OR with their own staff. They don't Mm -hmm. have OR staff there. And at least at my former facility, those OR techs, those surgical technologists were not actual surgical technologists, they were trained on the job by whoever came before them. So there was no understanding really of, uh, you know, from, from a formal education standpoint about sterilization, it was just training on the job training. And so that's what I'm wondering about dental when it comes to running that tabletop sterilizer, running that ultrasonic, are they getting a real are they getting any of that in their formal education about how to test the sonic? How does it properly run? How does, Mm -hmm. how does the sterilizer properly run? How do you know it, how to test it? And you know, what, what are the implications of that? If you do have problems, you know, like, is that part of their uh, education? I would love to know those things because I I'm, I'm not real sure because there was a few times where I did get the, the, the gumption uh, to ask some questions of my <laughs> of my techs that were helping do the cleaning and and they didn't seem they didn't come off very knowledgeable. Maybe they didn't understand the questions because patients typically don't ask them questions about their cleaning and sterilization procedures. But I wasn't overwhelmed with confidence <laughs> after having the sure. conversation. And, and that <laughs> could be you're, you're sharing your experience and now thinking about the dental office. And again, I don't want people to start going out. Ah! Yeah. But yeah. Some things you can do is when you walk into the office, what certificates do they have for the staff? Um, I been in a f- many dental offices. We didn't even get on the washers. I don't even want to tell you about the washers. Uh, we can talk forever, but uh, this one doctor does belong to OSAP and he goes to the meeting every year. And his staff follows their 
infection control guidelines. So you can see in SM certificates what they've gone to. And again, it's how do you approach them? There's a book that I don't think a lot of people know about, Kevin. I think you know about the AKI Institute out of Germany. They put out the Red Book, you know, for uh, instrument reprocessing. Have you, you've heard about the Red Book from AKI? Yes. Well, guess what? They have the Green Book for dentistry. Now, it was last updated in 2016, but when I get calls from dentistries or for, from dental professionals, I tell them about this book. It's free. You go search at AKI uh, Dental Green Book. Again, uh, it's, it's got a little more European flavor to it, but it's a good book to help start what to do, the, the issues, and a lot of it, they're all the same. We're all reprocessing instruments. We got to clean and brush and do that all the right way. It's how do we help the dental professionals? And again, it gets back to some people I've talked to. Well, the mouth isn't sterile, but I know we only try to do this for 10 or 15 minutes. And um, I just thank you for wanting to open people's eyes to think about their dental professionals. And for us who go in and audit, we have done some dental clinics and uh, we try to help them and tell them about ANSI Amy SD79, which they should be following. And they have uh, small tabletop sterilizers. I got pictures where they just jam the stuff in there. Yeah, I, and it's not everywhere, everybody. Like, yeah, I, I don't want to paint this horrible picture, but it's all about training and education. Like you said, your OB, we're here to help and to raise the level to get that confidence up, Kevin. I hope I didn't make it too ooh that scary out there but you know no i i it, that was probably me doing that but the but the reality is that we all have to remember too is okay i'm i'm such and such years old i've gone to the dentist all these years i have not really had any issues yes. so i mean like we we do have to fall back on our experience a little bit and not yes. over overwhelm ourselves with with fear <laughs> you know yes yes that's we true. do need to raise awareness we need to uh whether it's our own understanding of what's going on in the dental industry and trying to you know cross paths in in there and help each other out but um Overall, we can't we can't overwhelm ourselves with fear and just not get yeah, the, the I, important work done that we need to get done. That's right. You know, it, it, uh, <laughs> with that real quick is it's very interesting that, again, as with anything, you try to teach and get people to understand, you know, there could be a better you, you could do this or try that. And uh, if they haven't had issues, why? Well, you want to try to always get to best practice and is people are more educated. We know it's happening with our physicians. Now, not everything is true on Google or where you search, but physicians now are being challenged in a different way. Their customer or their patient is saying, well, I've read this. I've heard about this. Oh, yeah. What about, and some of it is just advertisement from TV. You know, I want to take this drug or whatever, but that too, you have a dental professional, they've gone to dental school, or hopefully your hygienist went to and became a certified hygienist and just wasn't trained or whatever. And they understand the foundations because we know what happens in our own reprocessing. If people don't understand the foundation, it makes it difficult on what they're doing and understand why they're doing it. And that's what we want to do. Why would you test every day or why do you do this or why do you brush that way or what's the best way to take some men off something so kevin thanks for just having a pretty frank conversation of uh people should dental clinics is another area we need to help them bam kick it up a notch as i just said today so hopefully <laughs> this will be well received myself. by the yeah. dental industry it's not <laughs> knocking them trust me i've you know you know I get no, lots of I dental agree. work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had my share as well. So, yeah. yeah, no, it's been great. I appreciate it, Steve. And I, I've been learning a little bit as we've had this discussion and had some discussion prior to recording. And uh, yeah, it's definitely an area where I need to to learn a lot more. But uh, thank you, as always. And uh, we'll see problem. you on the next one. Okay. Uh, take care, Kevin. Thanks again. Bye-bye. That wraps up this episode with Stephen Kovac. Just as a recap, we were talking in general about the dental industry, 
Like sterile processing in the hospital or the ASC setting, the dental industry is in need of sterilization education as well. And maybe there are ways that we can help. This is something that we should all be thinking about because we all need routine dental care and procedures. We may not all need surgery one day, but we sure will need dental care, which incidentally is closely tied to our overall health. So what can we do to help the dental industry? This is a question that I would like for people to give some consideration. If you've had experiences with your dentist where you've reviewed their sterilization procedure or just had conversations with them about these critical processes, we'd love to hear about it. You can reach us at asktheeducator at hmark.com. I want to thank you all for listening, and please remember to subscribe to the podcast. All opinions expressed on this show are those of the presenters. Before using any medical device, it is important to review the device manufacturer's instructions for use.